So uh, we also have been moving. We have a brand new apartment, as you can hear in the sound of the apartment. So with today, um, we are just finished with the floor. I'm really tired. And we did everything uh, ourselves with the help of our friends and family. So and this is the living room, ladies and gentlemen. And we have perfect view of the tulips. So you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, that we're in the middle of the flowers in Holland. This is the flower area where we live. So with Pavel, I like to play patterns. But <laughs> when we were doing the wallpaper, this, it's not a real concrete wall. Uh, it was very difficult. So a little tip in between, never do patterns when you're doing wallpaper. It sucks. When you play paddle, paddle, you should play with patterns. Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are in Sossheim in Terwege with Carlos. And I don't know what we're going to train today. Carlos, what are we going to train today? I don't know. We have yeah. a lot of things to choose. Some okay. A uh, lot of things I would like to do better. So. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what would be the most important one? Uh, lately I'm struggling a lot with the bajada okay. or with the drop shots or stop volleys. Okay. One of those I think could work very okay. good. And also I would like to improve a lot my volleys. Okay. So any of those. A bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> so today a bit of everything with Carlos. Vamos. Vamos. Nice. Okay, grandissima. <laughs> okay, Carlos, with the bajada, would you like to do it with the, the forehand side or with the backhand or both? Mostly forehand, yeah. We can also do some backhand because, yeah, you yeah. need both. And normally I play on the right, so maybe I'm, I'm playing some with the uh, backhand normally, okay. not so many with the forehand. Yeah, or your partner because his forehand is in the middle. So what happens? So when you play the bajada, uh, what is the mistake? Uh, I don't really know. You tell me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> many of them just go into the net and are okay. not, not very consistent with it. Okay. Yeah, so many mistakes. Okay. And I don't get as much power as I would like. Okay, so a powerful bajada. Yeah. Okay. Vamos. We do as following. So you get two shots in a row. You get one forehand or one backhand, you go around the yellow dot and you get a high ball and you play the bajada. And then uh, try to play it fast, straight or through the center, and then I can see more or less what the mistake is. So start in a defense position. Yeah, okay. yeah. We, we want to practice a lot of bajadas. Yeah, so if I get the first ball at the back, then yeah. go around. Yeah, because otherwise you have to run around a lot. Almost. Good. Yeah, play with the forehand. Play it with the forehand. Ooh, maybe it's better to play here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good. Nice. So what's wrong? <laughs> yeah, normally it's 
the shot is wrong. Okay. <laughs> you play better on camera. Maybe. Yeah. The camera, camera <laughs> loves me. Yeah. Um, what I think happens is that you might drop the ball too much. Maybe. Uh, and then if you want to play fast, it, it's, it becomes more dangerous. So if you hit it like here, it would be risky to play fast. If you can hit it higher, you can play faster. So what I think you should do is to try to hit it higher mm -hmm. from the glass. Can you try that? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, nice. No worries. Continue. Nice. Big difference. Around. Yeah. Yes, that's the one. I think you should hit it high, but also in, you have to hit the ball in front of you to accelerate. Yeah. So you have to be very close to the glass. What might help is that you prepare a little bit higher before you are there. So what it looks like, Carlos, is that you're here and then there, instead of already being here. Mm -hmm. And then um, your record is already higher. You can take the ball higher and your timing would be more calm, more Spanish. <laughs> okay. Yeah? Yes, high, high, high. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's good. Good mistake. Hi, hi, racket. Yes. Yes. Now you're able to play fast. Hi, racket. Hi, racket. Nice. Hi, racket. Hi, racket. Wow. No worries. Yes, now the contact point was in front. Yeah, that was too low. So hit the ball higher. Last couple of shots. Hit the ball now. Now. Yes. Claro que si. Last one. Now. Yes. Wow, much better. Let's pick up the balls. I'm just leaning back. Sometimes when I hit the, the ball, yeah. instead of leaning. That, 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 that also depends on the contact point. I think if the contact point is in front of you, it's, it's, it's there, then you will go there. Yeah. If we break it down, I think one of the most important was the record already there, because now you hit the ball more clean, I think. You want to hit it more in front, sometimes you have to let the ball drop, yes. But when you want to play a good ba bagada, we spoke about this before the camera, you have to be very close to the glass, like uh, on the glass sometimes. So when you get lobbed, run there, drink a coffee, play the bagada. That will be easier. And now it was quite aggressive already, so I think it's a, it's a good shot. And sometimes you don't need to play faster than this. There is no, no point. So if you play with this speed into my body, there's not much I can do, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. The best thing now, we pick up the balls. Let's go. Recoger most de las pelotas, por favor. Yeah. Okay, Carlos, you said it's going to be different when I'm at the net and I have to run all the way there, which is important mm. because also it's kind of uh, reading what is going to happen and if you can mm. smash yes or not or, or you have to let the ball bounce yes or not. You, you never know. And the faster you make the decision, the easier it becomes and the better your bagada. So what we do now is I play, you're at the net, you practice the volleys because you're going to practice this, those anyway. At some point I play the lob and then you play the bagada. Yeah, if you think you can play the bandeja, you should play the bandeja. If you think you can play the bajada, you play the bajada. So now we focus on uh, how fast and how close you can be to the glass. Uh, it's not super high here, but let's say you play outdoors, you still need to run like very fast. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, also for you, if you get lobbed today or tomorrow, when you get lobbed, run very fast to the glass, wait there and then play the bajada. 
So you need to have the contact point in front of you, and the only way to do that is to be very close to the glass. Subscribe to the channel. Very good. So this is, I would say, no mass. <laughs> this is this is the one. Okay. Instead, in, still, I, I felt like the position. Then I hit the ball a bit close to me, and then I was yeah getting away with it. And, so and then the question is, is, is it important? Uh, maybe. If you can play this shot. Yeah, right. If this um, is the result. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe with this situation, maybe half of the balls succeed yeah. and the other half don't. Yeah. And that's the matter. Yeah. Well, let's, yeah? let's try to find if there, is be, is there, yeah. if there becomes a problem somewhere. Yeah. But the feeling now was not everything was OK, even okay though the ball was good. Okay. Very good. Yes. So now I think at some point you were w walking. So it would be better to be there earlier. Faster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Third time on the net wing. This is my <laughs> shot. Today tutorial: how to hit the net wing. Vamos. So I think we're going to try to find like this two seconds break before the shot, so that you're here. Yeah. Coffee time and then play. No worries. So this is also about speed management. The higher you feel the ball or contact the ball, the higher you can, the faster you can play. And if the ball is lower, you have to play slower. All up. Ooh, faster. Yes, yeah, this is, I like this one. Even though now it's out, but. This is, this is good. Now you are super fast. You had a coffee and then you played the shot. Yeah, maybe now it was very clear that I wouldn't make it with the bandeja. So I was not trying to stop here for the bandeja and then okay. go. Okay. Now I, I was sure yeah. I had to go to the back. So, 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 I just so maybe it's in the decision making that you have to decide, okay, boom, I, I'm yeah. going to let the ball bounce, I'll play a bajada. Okay, let's play a few more than the folly. Wow, very good. Now you are super rapido. Benga. Okay. All right. Are you satisfied with the bajada? It's going good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still not feeling 100% comfortable, especially with my positioning. Okay. And how I get, how far from me I get the ball, how comfortable I am. Yeah. Really. When and then you're the speaking ball. about how far from the side or how far in front? Both. Okay. Both. Sometimes I end up hitting the ball too close to my body or, or behind. Yeah. Yes, so both. Do you so. think it's always possible to be perfect for the ball? Yeah, I guess not. No. Naturally. Okay. Yeah. And maybe especially not for the bajada because you have to run very far. So I guess it's a decision that if you think you, you feel like you come into this uncomfortable position that you just play the lopper softer. Yeah. And then you only play the bajada if you're like, if you have this coffee break before the ball. I think that that will be important. And still the bajada is better than you think, I think. You are, you bring yourself down a bit too much. Yeah, maybe it's because yeah. of the feeling when I okay. hit the ball, that feeling yeah. of I'm not being comfortable. Yeah. And then the outcome is many times not so good. Yeah, or sometimes it is good and you still feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, so you have to look at the results first and then the technique. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. and also maybe yeah. Then then when you're playing, the feeling is different too. Uh, yeah, it's not like a training that I can make mistakes and it doesn't matter. Yeah, and then when I'm playing, the the outcome is not so good. Many times the ball many times floats okay. a lot or just goes down to the net. So yeah, the feeling is not so good. Oh. But yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe it's also about getting a bit of confidence and really believing that it yes. works. Yeah, yeah, and, and focus <laughs> and with on more confidence. Yeah, it will also work better. Yeah, if I'm doing the bajada already thinking it's not going to work. No, you have to just play it. Yeah, and it and if it's a match or a tournament, I was talking to uh, Harry uh, uh, two days ago. I said, well, it's uh, you cannot win. He said you cannot win twenty thousand euros if you win this tournament here. So doesn't matter if you lose or you make mistakes. Yeah. It's a, it's a valid point. Yeah, so we can still make a lot of mistakes. It's not the, the end of the world and, and you will get better. Okay, the volleys. What would you like to improve with the volleys? I think being a bit more, able to put a bit more pressure. I okay. think uh, my volleys are a bit basic, so to, okay. so to say it. Uh, being able to put a bit more pressure, a bit better volleys. Okay. And especially with the backhand, the backhand volley, because I'm a, normally I'm a right side player. Yeah. So I get a lot of backhand volleys. Yeah. So and where do you like to play, straight or cross court? Uh, both. Okay. Both. Uh, normally I play a lot to the middle, that's for sure. Yeah. And I don't play so much straight, and I think I shoot sometimes. Yeah. So what I volley to the corner straight. That what I was thinking of with your backhand to go, to go there. Yeah. It's a very good angle. Yeah. That one. Uh, uh, and it's sometimes very difficult to defend. We can start with that shot. I play you that shot and we play some rallies and then I can have a look in how much, uh, how low the ball is. So yeah. if you can play the contact point lower than my knees, it's a good shot. Okay, should we try that? Yep. And then Let's we go. look to the result and then to the technique. Okay. <laughs> nice. What is the result? Uh, of the ball. Not very accurate. No, no, no. <laughs> not, not a result. Where, where does the ball bounce when you're playing the, uh, the back end? Where does it have to bounce? No, where uh, of from these few back end follies, where did the ball bounce? All different. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> one went out, one went to the fence, one went more, a bit more short in front of you, yeah. and one was a bit deeper. Yeah, I think so. two or three against the fence first. Yeah. Uh, against the yeah, okay. glass. The side glass. The side glass. Yeah. And it's also important that when you look at the result that it's not good or bad, it's just where the ball bounce, uh -huh. bounces. Because yeah. if I ask you to play more aggressive and you hit the glass, you kind of succeeded in your goal because you played more aggressive. And then it's okay to make the mistake to the glass. Uh -huh. What I think is this <laughs> was the technique part. If you prepare like this, you can never play a good volley yeah. to the side wall because the angle is it's too straight. So what would be better, Carlos, if you can prepare more here? Yeah. So if you can try to play the first uh, more there, I also like this one, the left hand high, right hand down, to play to the corner, you will play more aggressive because you can make the corner and you can also play with more slice. Because from here, if you yeah. play with slice, it doesn't hurt uh, a lot. So try to get it higher. And then the result will be that the ball will bounce maybe sometimes closer, but that's okay. Yeah. yeah? Okay. <laughs> nice. Yes! Higher! Yes! Yes! So you were preparing higher, but the ball ended up being lower because of the height and the slice. Higher! Yeah! Maybe it helps that your left hand goes, your elbow of your left arm goes higher. Okay. Because then. Yes, exactly. Woohoo! Yes. Ooh. Very good. How, how many uh, do you play this angle of, often? Uh, not so often. No, it's so good. Yeah. Because yeah. also you can step into the net and your partner can yeah. take the middle. Yeah. Very good. Woo -hoo -hoo. Very nice. <laughs> that was the one, right? Yeah. Step into the net. Yeah, because the ball is like behind me. It's, uh, it's, it's very good. And remember to prepare higher. Yes. Okay. Oi. It was in, ladies and gentlemen. 
Esa es. Very good. Oh, okay. again. <laughs> I'm gonna start to play tournaments. Very good, Carlos. Wow. Oh. Oh, <laughs> nearly. Yes, this is the one. Drop shot? Cool. Yeah. yeah. That one is awful for me. Yeah? Yeah. Do you play the drop shot sometimes? Barely. Hardly ever. Because okay. I'm terribly bad with it. So yeah? okay. I try sometimes because if you don't try, you will never learn. That's yeah. what we were saying before. Yeah. But works. Okay. One out of five times. Okay. <laughs> Only has 40 zero or 40, 40 yeah. 50. Yeah, exactly. When, yeah. when the score is uh, yeah. up, then I, yeah. we can try it. But I think it's a good shot. I, I, we trained it Monday uh, uh, with Diego, and uh, it was quite effective. So I think I also realized that we should do it more often. Yeah. Because I also, if they reach it, let's say you play the drop shot, and I have the contact point here, and I play to you. You are yeah. you are in charge, but I cannot play the lob over your head. So the drop shot doesn't have to be amazing as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, the only yeah. thing is that when it's a drop shot, you have to play it when it's here, and when it's there, you play the, your normal volleys. So some players they, they 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 ask on the YouTube channel, what do I do with the low volleys? Drop shot. Mm -hmm. So I think what we should try is I feed you some balls. Uh, one forehand volley drop shot, one backhand volley drop shot, and it has to remain, I will put a line in front of the line with the second bounce. And then we have a good of the result of the ball, how good the shot is. Okay. Yeah? Okay, Rico Germo. Okay, can you make the swing shorter? Okay. Can you can you defend the can preparation or the follow through? Both. Both. D just this. Can you can you defend some sh shots? So I play the drop shot. So when I play the drop shot, it's very soft. This is this could be enough sometimes. Uh -huh. So sure. because you don't want to play too much slice. So just doing this it, is enough. Okay. And, and, and if it's not a scoring shot, you need to run. You are out of position. Uh, so I can open the court with, even with a bad drop shot. Yeah. The only thing I need to be sure of that the, my drop shot doesn't bounce against the fence because then the ball will come up. Yes. 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 Yes, 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 very good, very, oh, nearly, <laughs> wait, very nearly, yes, yes, oh, and now, uh, that was a very good, so now it feels like you can hit way more drop shots in or over the net, just because you make the movement shorter. The shorter the movement, the more control you will have. Okay. So you don't want to do too much of this. So this is this is good. And um, now we play a rally. So I play to to you, and you decide when you play the drop shot. It's a bit strange that you mentioned exactly something that when I research a bit, I've seen it recommended. It's playing the, the the drop shot to the fence. Yeah. Maybe to open it, both things. One. Because of the bounce of the fence, yeah, it's true that it can bounce up, but they also say it can also bounce anywhere else, and yeah. then it's more unpredictable. Like that's the reason why we always play to the fence if we can. Yeah. So now that you say don't, yeah, uh, yeah. What I what I would say if yeah. I have the folly here, that I play like more of a this yeah, shot. Yeah. If I make an angle, I I I prefer to play a little but bit in more this with case, pressure. Playing that drop shot here instead of in the middle, so it gets more complicated with the fence. And also maybe you're opening a bit more angle, but it's also more risky. Yeah. So yeah, and know. also it doesn't have to be a winner. Yeah, uh, yeah. When it's like a drop shot and it is uh, here, it, it sometimes the ball it just gives the other player more time. 
I think it's important to play to the player that is out of position. And yeah. we don't do that too much. So let's say this cross-court player is with his back against the glass. Then I want to play the drop shot on his side of the court. Yeah. So it might reach the fence. But I, f I feel a lot of players, they have they want to play the b forehand uh, drop shot there, backhand drop shot there. But if he is out of position, it's okay to play in that, even though it's a weird yeah. angle. And if, if it's a drop shot and you make a short movement, everything is possible. The, the, the ball can bounce up if it, if it goes against the fence. This ball can bounce up. Now my opponent has more time to respond. But it's not, not always the case, but maybe it's 50-50. So it's a, it's a gamble. Is, is the, is, uh, do you think I answered your question correctly? I still, uh, yeah, I think both things make sense. Yeah? So. Yeah, I think you could accelerate against the fence. So when you have the ball against the fence and you have a higher contact point, that you can play the ball faster. Hmm. Maybe, yeah, because it could be risky. So I think to play the drop shot against the fence, we had a little discussion, uh, what would be better? If I have like a high contact point, I think it would be very good to play against the fence. I like to play there. But if it's like low, it can be risky to play against the fence. So then it might be better to play, to play a drop shot. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> yeah, and this is already a very good shot. I will try to take it uh, now to get the, okay. the bola. Nice. Nice. Good decision. With a very short and compact swing now. Yeah, but you're still holding that position. So I'm still out of position even though the ball's not amazing. So you just need to dare to play it. That's the one. Nice. What would be a good height? Uh, to hit the drop shot, like a contact point. What would be a nice, what do you like to, what kind of height of ball would you like to have? Not too high. Not too high and fast or slow? Middle, medium. Yeah, medium. Medium speed, maybe too fast, very difficult to control. Okay. And too slow, maybe it sticks here. Not you want to do too much. Too, yeah. Yeah, then it stops too much. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, so I think it's important to find that ball. Yeah. This is not with everybody. Some players, they like a fast uh, shot. We did with the uh, Canal de Bay, we did a drop shot day where we had to play into a, a basket and, and they were asking what kind of shot would you like? And then uh, some players said, play a fast ball, play me a slow ball, play me a medium speed. It uh, was a bit more fun. Well, you had to be there, I think. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it needs to fit your technique. So you need to know what kind of ball you like to play the drop shot on. And then when you get that ball, you can be more confident. You think, oh, this is my one, boom, and you just play it. So I think you need to find a way. I like personally if they play like low fast to play like this one. And if it's very slow, I do that too much and my, my drop shot is not so amazing anymore. So with the bajada, with the drop shot, with the follies, I think we need to find like a ball that you think is perfect for this solution. So that you think, oh, I'm gonna practice the back end to the side wall. I would like to have this and just wait for this ball. And then yeah. you play it with everything you have. That will be very, the most important thing, I think, for you. What do you think? Yeah. Cool. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, I agree. Okay, perfect. That was all for the today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Carlos, for being in Thank the video. You, Muchas gracias. You can also book lessons with Carlos, by the way, here in uh, Sassenheim. And uh, we see you next Monday. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios.